Now when you come down to the blues, now you just sit here and watch me. Hey VC, it's Christian Blues Guy. Welcome back to Blues Guy Vinyl. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in and joining me. How's it going, eh? What's happening, baby? So, uh, today's video is going to be a Vinyl Finds video. It's sort of a mid-February. Mid uh, these items here, these here items, I picked up at uh, Sloth Records. Let's see my buddy Dave down there at Sloth Records. And... Uh, through, found some pretty good stuff. So, uh, yeah, first of all, what's playing in the background? Well, that's a little bit of the uh, Canadian boogie woogie band, Power Blues Band. This is uh, 1984's Power Blues, Powder Blues Band, sorry, live at Montreal. Good stuff. Nice. Rhythm and Blues, Boogie Woogie. Speaking of Canada, um, got some quite a bit of Canadiana here. Uh, about half of the artists here are Canadian. And about half the stuff is blues. Some of it is Canadian blues. What? I, I know, right? I know. All right, uh, let's uh, get hopping here. Uh, these were um, two for five bucks. This is his first, uh, first four. His first four records were two for five bucks. Street Heart! Great Canadian band. I, I talk all the time about the great Canadian band Street Heart. This is uh, Quicksand Shoes from, I think, it's from 80. It's from 1980. Yep, there we go, 1980. So let's talk about Kenny Shields on vocals, great vocalist. Another very strong album by Street Heart. I think it was a big, big hit on this one. Jokes on you, maybe it was pretty good dragging me down. That's really a couple. But uh, you know, they all can't be kicking in the front doors. For me, Street Heart, it's all good, it doesn't matter. Next up, another really cool Canadian band. This is April Wine and uh, The Nature of the Beast. Very, very happy with this one because it came with everything, including that Montreal Canadiens t shirt there on our lead vocalist. Got like that. April Wine, kind of a. Uh, it's from 78, I think, by the way. April Wine are kind of. Um, I like street art, you know, uh, rock and roll band. I like hard rock. I don't really pop either. I don't know, FM radio rock. I don't know what the hell you call it. Arena rock, stadium rock. Various records. Like I said, it came with all the accoutrements, the uh, original inner sleeve. It's always a nice bonus. And the poster. I don't know who to hang up an April Wine poster. Fan, maybe, but. Anyway, nice poster. Nice to have it. Good that it's intact. Uh, another really cool Canadian band. This is the third out of those four that were two for five bucks. Uh, Trooper! And this is Flying Colors. Trooper. Um, three dressed up as a nine. Okay, track. That's kind of the big one off here. Uh, Mr. Pape is also pretty good. I mean, the whole album's great. Strong vocals, great guitar work. Again, very much like April Wine and Street Art. Just sort of power rock, arena rock type stuff. Also came with the inner sleeve, the original inner sleeve. has a cool artwork there. Lyrics and so on. But the last out of that um, two for five bucks is a Canadian bluesman by the name of Dutch Mason. And I have a couple of Dutch Mason albums already, but this one I did not have, so of course jumped on it. Dutch Mason sort of does 
his interpretation of Chicago is basically straight up Chicago blues. Uh, he plays electric guitar, he's got a great, powerful, sort of a little bit more of a bassy voice. And uh, he's got a great four piece band. Um, generally, most of his albums, he covers blues standards and then they do a couple of his own original recordings. Uh, and that's the case here with this one. You can see the uh, track listing. Like I said, a very powerful singer. He was, he's kind of a Dutch Mason, was kind of a big guy. So he's got, again, this sort of baritone, bellowy sort of style of playing or singing. And quite a very, very good guitar player, actually. But anyway, very happy to find any Dutch Mason. Not a lot of it out there, but if you happen to come across any Dutch Mason seat out there, scoop it up. Definitely well worth it. Uh, getting into uh, some American blues here a little bit. Uh, this is John Hammond, John Hammond II, or John Hammond Jr. One of my favorites, actually, speaking of great guitar players. He plays acoustic six string, he plays electric six string, he plays bottleneck style with a slide, he plays finger picking style, he plays with the harmonica rack and harmonica. Excellent. Oh, there, so there you go. He's playing this vintage guitar there. But John Hammond, this is uh, mileage. He's one of those guys, I see his stuff out there, I grab it. Just, for me, it's a no-brainer. I know it's going to be excellent. His guitar playing is outstanding. He's very, very good uh, harmonica player. I like his voice. Uh, he kind of has more of a, a strange sort of cracking style, the, the way he sings, almost like he's crying out. Uh, so he's got that nice, authentic, bluesy feel to him. He does more of a um, sort of folky style of blues, and more often than not, generally speaking, that's about 80% of the time it's acoustic blues. Although he has been known to record and play electric live and in studio. Much like I was talking about with Dutch Mason, who does covers and originals, same thing with John Hammond. He often covers you know, John Hooker, Walter Johnson, you name it. So on here he's got My Babe and Red Hot Kisses and Diddly Daddy. Hot tamales. Hot tamales in the red hot. There you go, track listing. And this, I believe, is on Stony Plains Records here in Canada. Which is rounder in the U.S. Go John Hammond Mileage. If you like Ry Cooter, then you would like John Hammond, I think. As close as I can get to some kind of comparison. All right, lastly here, uh, another sort of really cool Canadian act, sort of bluesy, blues rocky, and then we'll round it out with uh, some British fellers. So this is Mahogany Rush World Anthem. I've been having some great luck in the past year or so finding Mahogany Rush or Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. Again, since I've sort of discovered them or was uh, tipped off to, to Mahogany Rush, Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. You know, I've kind of kept one peep peeled at all times for it. Pretty successful. I really like pretty much everything I've picked up. I think this is the sixth album of theirs that I've picked up in the last maybe year, year and a half. The original insert in there with uh, some of the lyrics and so forth and the original inner sleeve as well, so that's nice. And this one I picked up for eight bucks, and uh, well worth it, I think. Oh, by the way, that John Hammond I picked up for uh, six dollars. It's Mahogany Rush, or uh, Frank Marina, and Mahogany Rush on Columbia. Sounds great. And the guitar playing is outstanding, of course. This is from 1977. And, uh, you know, again, the energy levels, I, I sound like I'm just being redundant, but to me, when it comes to blues, you've got to have a certain level of energy or emotion, one or the other. Whether it's sadness, whether it's being hyped up, you know, whether it's rejoice, wh whatever, whatever it is, you've got to have that certain something. And 
things are so great. Like I said, it's energy, emotion, whatever the case may be. And on this, definitely high energy. Excellent musicianship on this from you know, all the guys. Frank Marino, uh, Paul Harwood, uh, Jim on the drums, Jim uh, Ayo. And this one was produced by Frank Marino at Sterling Sound in New York City. So yeah, really, really great. Very happy to find that one. Chipping away at the old Mahogany Rush. And lastly here for today, this one was, I was really happy to find this one. This one I paid, I paid for this one, I think I paid 12, it 12 it was either 12 or 14 bucks for this. Anyways, it's Argus Wish Bone Ash. Again, sort of bluesy, blues inspired rock. These British cats here, the Argus. Outstanding album. I've, again, much like Mahogany Rush, I've been having a lot of luck in the past year, year and a half or so, finding Wishbone Ash. In fact, this is the third this, well, this is the third since 2021, so in a year and a couple of months that I found. Very, very happy. And this is on MCA, beautiful, really kind of unique looking MCA label there. And the, whoever owned this, the, the former owner of this really, really took care of his, his records. The record was absolutely spotless. He had it in this this inner sleeve. It's a sort of poly lined inner sleeve. Put his name in there. Martin Dashwood. Thank you, Mart Marty, my man. Thanks for looking after this thing. He even wrote the track listings on that inner sleeve there as well. It's kind of neat. So I put a new inner sleeve in it, but keeping this one, the original one, with it, just because I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, just in exquisite condition, the record, absolutely flawless. Even the, the outer jacket of the cover looks beautiful. And, uh, so very, very happy with these purchases. And uh, not a lot of money out of pocket. Those two for fives were really nice. It was great to pick up like, four records on those two for five bits. That's something that Dave, and something new that Dave's been sort of kicking around. He kind of wanted to have a go-between from his $1 bins to his $5, it's basically $5 and up for his used records, right? Depending on the grade and condition and whatnot, of course. But he kind of wanted to have something to bridge that jump from $1 records to $5. So he was trying to kind of a two for five bins. And uh, I hope he keeps it up and keeps replenishing it because I had some good luck with those four. Not to mention, you know, the John Hammonds and, uh, you know, the Mahogany Rush. Wishbone Ash, just really, really great. So, definitely uh, got me salivating and uh, thirsting for more records. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Definitely will be heading out a couple more digging sessions before the end of the month. So, until then, let me know what you think down below with all the other YouTube stuff. Keep digging, keep spinning. And until the next one, take care of it. All right? Thanks a lot. Cheers.